So, I just bought a plasma cutter from Lidl for 150 English pounds, and apparently it doesn't require an air compressor, so let's get it out of the box and have a look. Manual and safety information, where are you getting that? Should be able to read all that if I hold it there properly. Uh, here's the specs at the bottom. Just zoom in on that in a moment. So it's saying the max uh, cutting capacity is there and it has an integrated compressor which was what attracted me to it. And I think it's going to be fairly standard apart from that. That is something that really does appeal to me. I have to say that is an incredibly feeble looking earth cable. I will be upgrading that if it's any good and I want to keep it. There's the torch. Bog standard jobby. Has a lock there. It's quite fiddly to reach into there. Should have left more space. This is quite nice. This uh, cable spiraling. Haven't seen that before. Of other bits you get. I'm interested to see how this actually operates. Obviously the nozzle goes in there and then the wheels roll along, theoretically making it easier to do stuff. These nozzles look a little bit unusual so we're gonna have to see if they're easy to get. I'm just gonna go get the earth lead off my Chinese builder and we'll see how that compares. So here you can see quite dramatically the difference in thickness. This is the cable from my welder and this is the earth cable for the plasma cut. So they've really skimped on that by the looks of it. So I'm just gonna see if the one for the welder actually fits in. Hey, doesn't that look better? Doesn't that look better? Even though this one has seen better days, for sure, it's gonna be way better than this thing. Somewhere to plug on an external one. So. It's quite nice, it's quite nice. It does have one of these plugs, I've got an adapter somewhere. I've got a feeling this thing would be the weakest link for sure. But let's see if it goes on. Clickety click. That's the type of nozzle you get. I'll have to look into that to see if they're readily available. I don't want to be paying 10 quid a nozzle because uh, you'd soon get through them, I tell you. So what I'm going to do, I've got these 10 inch squares of some kind of steel and I'm going to use the plasma cutter to cut out a tail shape and we're going to make a tail for the wind turbine. First I need to give them a clean, not because they need to be nice and clean, to be plasma cutted. Thank you. That's probably my poor technique, but that was a lot harder than it should have been, for whatever reason. The second one went a lot better, so that's good. I'm just going to try turning the power up because I remember I only had it on halfway, so let's give it a bit more juice and see if it cuts any better. Whoa! Let's pick up the culprit, shall we? So let's try this, we're on 32 amps. It doesn't have a digital display. That was pretty good. On the higher ampage, definitely made a difference. Uh, it's all about the technique. It's, you can see that you need to continually clean these things with a wire brush. And then I'm gonna have to find a little file because you see the grooves, they need to be clean. The grooves are where the air kind of shoots out. So if they get, if they get stuck up, it's not gonna work very well. But so far, so good, the plasma cut. 